This guy wrote the book. It all starts with, and then there was William Donald Shaver. There's nobody that's impacted Baltimore like William Donald Schaefer, no one. I can't even think of a close second. He served as a demonstration, I think, to a lot of public officials about the kind of outreach that you need to do to the citizens of the city and the citizens of the state. I think for many people, even though he's been governor, he's Mr. Baltimore. Leadership's defined by the ability to first of all, have an idea, second of all, communicate it, and third of all, motivate people to make it happen. He did all three. Has to, has to start with chapter one, William Donald Shaver. One of the places where you might think about starting will be causing us all to feel better about ourselves and what we have here. We had sort of a, of a collective inferiority complex, I think. It was a place that you just drove through the tunnel to get to D.C. or go to New York in the north. And uh, we were not even really thought of as a stop along the way. I think the first thing he wanted to do was to make the citizens of Baltimore feel good about coming downtown. We created events, whether it was Think Pink Day or, or a festival or a winter activity to bring people out of their houses. Every holiday had to have an event. It didn't matter if it was freezing, it didn't matter whether it was snowing, he wanted you to come downtown. I'm mindful that this year's Artscape was a, a monster success. That started under William Donald Schaefer's watch. At the time, it was pretty bold. Close streets, interrupt people, celebrate the city. The turnaround was really in 1976 on, for tourism when the tall ships came. Hundreds of thousands of people came from two and three states away to see the tall ships and then we said, ah, oh, maybe Baltimore can draw some tourists. I think that was one of the big turning points to expose downtown Baltimore and the Inner Harbor to what was available. People of the city began to, to have pride in, in their city and, and what they were doing. The key component, I think, was sharing a, uh, a love for Baltimore City uh, and a love for the state of Maryland. What he was doing was trying to marshal a community to do two things. One, believe in itself. But second is he had a roadmap. He had a plan. He had a vision. This facility here, the convention center, might not have existed if he didn't have a vision that there was a need to have a gathering place for trade shows and conventions. He knew that if you want to bring people here, you need to have a convention center. So he pushed the convention center as mayor and got it done in the legislature. I mean, we weren't a convention town before Schaefer. Not at all, that I know of. It's his idea, just the force of his personality and his will made this happen. talk about how the Inner Harbor was going to attract thousands of tourists from all over the country and all over the world to come to Baltimore. And we thought he was slightly crazy. When everybody else looked at these dilapidated wharves, you know, all they saw was a problem. What he saw was a potential. He started talking about the future and his eyes te teared up about what he saw as a potential. He started talking about people walking out, eating outdoors. I mean, what the heck is he talking about? But you know, he saw what we see now. People wandering around everywhere. People may not realize it, but you know, Harbor Place became a major political issue. There was a referendum. The city voted as to whether to build Harbor Place. Today we say, obviously, it was the right thing to do. The heartbeat, the cheerleader, the schemer, the implementer was William Donald Schaefer, and he was relentless and pushed, and he, he brought a voracious appetite for innovation. Um, he caused all of us to redefine how we think of this, this area. People come here from all over the world to see Baltimore. So he did it.
city council was very worried about the city getting involved in building a fish tank, and that's what they called it. And believe it or not, it was very controversial. But he saw the vision of creating the first large aquarium on the East Coast. Isn't that awesome? This poster was done after Mayor Schaefer jumped in the seal pool, as he had promised to do if the aquarium wasn't finished on time, which it wasn't. The bet was he was going to jump in the shark tank, and we, we told him he can't jump, jump in the shark tank, because we, we pretty much knew what would happen then. <laughs> and I just thought at the time, he is the ultimate promoter. I mean, if he'll do this when something doesn't, doesn't work, I think he'll probably do most anything. That was probably the, one of the top PR stunts for uh, a politician anywhere because it ended up on uh, newspapers in India and all around the world and really started the, the uh, sort of kicked things off for the aquarium in the harbor. It was funny. He jumped in and swam around with the seals. He's like, you know, it's not a young chick here. And that was basically, you know, his plunge to say, we can do it. That was a dip for everybody, not just for William Bell and Schaefer. He'd do anything to help you. I mean, if you said, I need to move because of X, Y, and Z, he'd get everybody together. We'd all get in the bus and go to wherever it was and make it and change it and make it right. Underneath all that, you know, get it done and do it now and not good enough and everything is this really warm, wonderful human being. He is, in my mind, the uh, model for a public servant, what he's done for the city and state. He can certainly say that on his watch, the image of Baltimore changed from being a city on a downward spiral and turned into a city that's really been proud of itself and now is, uh, is emulated and copied all over the world. This is truly an example of where one person can literally change the, the fate of a community. It's all about the people, and that's what he concentrated on. He has made it what it is today, which is, to me, one of the finest tourist attractions around.